Hi there. Today we're embarking on a captivating journey as we step back in time to explore the legendary TV series, Dallas. I'm sure many of you hold fond memories of this classic show. Dallas is a timeless gem that has left an indelible mark on television history. Join us as we relive the magic, revisiting the series with the entire cast, then and now. We'll uncover the original identities and ages of the talented actors from the show and witness how they've transformed in the year 2023. So without further ado, let's dive into the world of Dallas together, Barbara Bel Geddes as Miss Ellie Ewing. Miss Ellie Ewing had a compelling journey on Dallas due to some real-life circumstances. Veteran stage actress Barbara Bel Geddes portrayed the Ewing family matriarch seamlessly until the 1983 season. However, between seasons, Geddes underwent a quadruple bypass operation, sidelining her until late in the subsequent season. Due to Geddes' health, Ellie was temporarily reimagined, and Donna Reed stepped into the role from 1984-1985. After Geddes recovered, she returned to the role until the series concluded in 1991. Geddes had a distinguished career in the theater before Dallas, earning Tony Award nominations for her performances as Maggie in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and the lead role in Mary, Mary. She also garnered several accolades for portraying Ginevra in Deep Are the Roots. Beyond Dallas, she is most recognized in Hollywood for her collaborations with Alfred Hitchcock, making appearances in episodes of Alfred Hitchcock Presents and playing a pivotal role in Vertigo. Geddes retired from acting following Dallas, and she passed away in 2005 at the age of 82. Importantly, she played a significant role in Dallas's history as she secured the show's only major award, winning a Golden Globe for Best Actress in 1982. Larry Hagman as J.R. Ewing the initial seasons of Dallas primarily delved into the feud between the Ewings and the Barnes family. However, writers soon recognized that fans were particularly captivated by J.R. Ewing, portrayed by Larry Hagman. He held the distinction of being the sole character to feature in every episode of the series, a total of 356 episodes, and his portrayal endured through spin-offs and related series over the years. Hagman gained fame in A Dream of Genie before Dallas, and while he continued his acting career post the show's triumphant run, he didn't quite attain the previous heights of success. He took on various one-off television roles, and his filmography includes works like 1978's Superman, 1995's Nixon, and 1998's Primary Colors. The role of J.R. remained a recurring part of his career, as he appeared in TV movies, The Knot's Landing spin-off, and the 2012 Dallas Revival. In his later years, he diversified his portfolio, securing recurring roles on series such as Desperate Housewives and Nip Tuck. Hagman passed away in 2012, succumbing to complications from leukemia. He was 81 years old. Ken Kercheval as Cliff Barnes. Every compelling soap opera necessitates a formidable adversary, and that's precisely the role Cliff Barnes played in Dallas. Under the portrayal of Ken Kercheval, Barnes devoted his life to outsmarting the cunning J.R. Ewing. Occasionally, he tasted success, but more often than not, J.R. emerged victorious. Similar to Larry Hagman, who played J.R., Kershaval reprised his role as Cliff in Dallas TV movies and The Revival. Post the series, he also made appearances in various television shows over the years. Kershaval's pace slowed considerably after the conclusion of Dallas. Interestingly, most of his significant roles occurred either before the show commenced or during its original run. Nevertheless, he frequently secured guest spots on diverse shows. You might recognize Kercheval from appearances on series like Walker, Texas Ranger, ER, Murder, She Wrote, Crossing Jordan, or Diagnosis Murder. Notably, he starred in the TV movie I Still Dream of Jeannie, an intriguing Dallas connection given Larry Hagman's involvement in the original show. Ken Kercheval passed away in 2019 at the age of 83. 
His final screen credit is attributed to the 2020 film Surviving in L.A., Steve Canali as Ray Krebs. The unacknowledged Ewing, Ray Krebs, never sees the limelight on Dallas as some other family members did. Actor Steve Canali delivered a commendable portrayal of the character and was willing to revisit the role in the follow-up series and a selection of TV movies inspired by the show. Canali himself didn't quite experience the same level of success as several of his fellow cast members. Nonetheless, you've likely come across him in other productions, particularly if you have an affinity for classic television. He made guest appearances on an extensive array of popular shows, including Starsky & Hutch, Charlie's Angels, The Love Boat, Fantasy Island, and Walker, Texas Ranger. Additionally, he had recurring roles on various shows, such as All My Children and Okavango, The Wild Frontier. Canali's most recent acting credit dates back to the 2012 Dallas Revival series, suggesting he might have retired from acting. He resides with his wife in California, where he pursues interests as a watercolor artist and philanthropist. Patrick Duffy as Bobby Ewing Bobby Ewing stood out as the anomaly on Dallas. Unlike his brother J.R., Bobby wasn't a reprehensible character. However, in the ruthless realm of oil tycoons depicted in the show, this often made him a target. He also found himself at the center of one of the most overused plot twists in the show's history, the infamous shower scene that unveiled the revelation that the entire preceding season in which Bobby supposedly died had been nothing more than a dream. Patrick Duffy portrayed the character of Bobby and experienced considerable success beyond Dallas. He revisited the role in various spin-offs, TV movies, and the 2012 Dallas Revival. Alongside his Dallas commitments, Duffy enjoyed lengthy stints on other television series, including the 1990s sitcom Step by Step and an extended on-and-off tenure on the enduring daytime drama The Bold and the Beautiful. Leveraging his soap opera and sitcom expertise, he secured guest appearances on shows such as NCIS and All Rise, Notable projects also include a string of made-for-TV Christmas movies and his narration of the Pony Excess episode for ESPN's documentary series 30 for 30. Linda Gray as Sue Ellen Ewing JR's spouse, Sue Ellen, was initially conceived as a minor role, given that the show was initially planned as a five-episode miniseries. However, when Dallas received a full series pickup, Sue Ellen's prominence in the show significantly expanded. Fortunately, the role was in the capable hands of accomplished actress Linda Gray. Much like many Dallas stars, Gray revisited the character in various spin-offs, but she also continues to showcase her acting prowess in diverse roles. In Di Dallas provided Gray with ample exposure to the soap opera milieu, and she translated that experience into numerous noteworthy television performances. She had a brief stint on Melrose Place as Hillary Michaels, the head of a modeling agency. Subsequently, a spin-off centered around her character titled Models, Inc. was produced, with Gray in the lead. Her television credits also include appearances on The Bold and the Beautiful, Hilton Head Island, and Hollyoaks. While Gray isn't a frequent presence in major films, she has ventured into the realm of cinema. Some of her more recent contributions include supporting roles in Intuitions and Grand Daddy Day Care, Victoria Principal as Pamela Barnes Ewing. One of the more captivating characters in Dallas, Pam Ewing consistently found herself on the outskirts. Although she married Bobby to become part of the Ewings, her roots traced back to the Barnes family, adding a layer of drama, particularly in the early seasons, as Pam grappled with being perceived as both a spy and an outsider. Actress Victoria Principal delivered exceptional performances in the role, earning numerous significant award nominations for her portrayal. Principal has achieved success across various domains, including acting, Beyond Dallas, she has made notable guest appearances on a range of shows, such as Home Improvement, Chicago Hope, Just Shoot Me, The Practice, 
and even Family Guy. She also featured in Titans, a show from the early 2000s that evidently drew inspiration from Dallas. The series had a brief run of 14 episodes and marked Principal's final on-screen appearances. Beyond the realm of television, Principal initiated a prosperous beauty line named Principal Secret Skin Care, from which she stepped away in 2019. She is also an accomplished author, founded a production company, and actively supports various philanthropic endeavors. Howard Keel as Clayton Farlow. Although not initially part of the cast when Dallas debuted, it took little time for esteemed actor Howard Keel to captivate audiences in the role of Clayton Farlow. Farlow's character brought an intriguing dynamic as he navigated his connection to the Ewing family while grappling with the opulence surrounding him. Keel proved to be the ideal actor for the role, drawing on his extensive career in musicals and westerns before joining the series. Keel had already established himself on Broadway before making the transition to Hollywood. Notable appearances included his role as Curly in Oklahoma, where he held the lead for a year and a half before securing a contract with MGM. His Hollywood career took off with significant roles such as Frank Butler in Annie Get Your Gun, along with performances in musicals like Showboat, Kiss Me Kate, and Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Following the conclusion of Dallas, Keel made sporadic guest appearances on various shows, featuring in episodes of Murder, She Wrote, and Walker, Texas Ranger. Keel passed away in 2004 at the age of 85, with his final on-screen role in the 2002 film My Father's House, Charlene Tilton as Lucy Ewing Cooper. Lucy Ewing experienced a somewhat fluctuating journey on Dallas, Initially part of the show from the outset, she was written out after the 1985 season. Returning a few years later, she faced another exit in 1990. Despite occasional mentions during her absences, she made sporadic appearances in the 2012 revival series. Throughout these transitions, the character remained under the portrayal of a single actress, Charlene Tilton. The Petite Tilton achieved success not only in acting, but also in music over her career. Preceding her Dallas tenure, she had minor roles in Eight Is Enough and Happy Days, with her first film appearance in 1978's Freaky Friday, alongside Jodie Foster. Subsequently, she featured in several lowbrow parody films, like Silence of the Hams, Superhero Movie, Paranormal Calamity, and others. Tilton also secured various small roles in film and television. In the realm of music, Tilton's notable work includes a European dance hit titled C'est la Vie, worth checking out for yourself. Her most recent appearance was a cameo in the 2019 film Starting Up Love, indicating her continued engagement in acting roles. Susan Howard as Donna Culver Krebs. Donna Culver Krebs faced challenges in her Dallas storyline. A significant plot revolved around her pregnancy, subsequent miscarriage, and the strain it placed on her relationship with Ray. This unfolded in the season following Bobby's apparent death when Patrick Duffy initially departed the show. Later, Duffy decided to return, revealing Donna's ordeal as part of the dream season. Unfortunately, the character never fully recovered, leading to actor Susan Howard's departure not long after. Before her Dallas role, Howard enjoyed success with numerous guest appearances on shows such as Star Trek, Columbo, I Dream of Jeannie, Mission Impossible, and Bonanza. She also took on a leading role in the series Petrocelli before joining the cast of Dallas. However, her departure from the series marked a significant shift in her acting career, with only a handful of roles in subsequent years. Post-acting, Howard transitioned extensively into politics, assuming administrative roles with organizations like the NRA and the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission. She became closely associated with the Texas Republican Party. Deborah Renard as Sly. Sly Lovegren, JR's dedicated secretary, may have been a secondary character in comparison to the main Dallas cast, 
but she made her presence felt in nearly 200 episodes of the series. This marked the debut role for Deborah Renard, leading to considerable success in Hollywood. After a hiatus of about a decade in the early 2000s, she rekindled her involvement in film and television, commencing in 2015. As Dallas concluded, Renard secured notable roles in major films. She co-starred with Jean-Claude Van Damme in 1990's Lionheart and appeared in Kazam. Her television credits include a recurring role on Days of Our Lives and guest appearances on Silk Stockings, Family Law, Due South, and Kung Fu. The legend continues. Transitioning from film and television, Renard returned to stage acting but has recently made a comeback on screen. She had an uncredited role in the 2015 miniseries Show Me a Hero and played a supporting role in the 2020 Christmas film Deck the Heart. Omri Katz as John Ross Ewing, J.R.'s son with Sue Ellen, John Ross Ewing III, was portrayed by the well-known young adult actor Omri Katz in the original Dallas series. Although John Ross is a central character in the 2012 revival series, Katz's role underwent recasting. Nevertheless, Katz enjoyed considerable success during his prime, featuring in several major roles that nostalgic 90s kids are sure to recall. Following the conclusion of Dallas, Katz had another stint on the television series Eerie, Indiana, where he assumed the role of Marshall Teller. Even more noteworthy, he portrayed Max, the tie-dye-clad protagonist in 1993's Hocus Pocus. Recently, he made guest appearances on a few popular television shows, including Freaks and Geeks and General Hospital. Katz's most recent role occurred in 2018 when he revisited the character of Marshall Teller for an episode of Childhood Thoughts. This marked his return to acting after a 16-year hiatus in credits. Although Katz is officially listed as a retired actor, the prospect of a Hocus Pocus revival may entice him to come out of retirement once again. Priscilla Presley as Jenna Wade Jenna Wade was Bobby Ewing's initial romantic interest, and she was most notably portrayed by Priscilla Presley. Interestingly, Presley was the third actress to take on this role. In Jenna's inaugural appearance, Morgan Fairchild portrayed the character for a single episode. Subsequently, Jenna returned, with Francine Tacker assuming the role for a few episodes. It wasn't until 1983 that Jenna became a regular character on the show, coinciding with Presley's debut in the role. Priscilla Presley has been associated with several high-profile relationships over the years. She was wed to Elvis Presley, with whom she had daughter Lisa Marie in 1968. Additionally, Presley had a brief relationship with Robert Kardashian in the 1970s. Beyond her time on Dallas, Presley found success as an actress, starring alongside Leslie Nielsen in the Naked Goon film series and making guest appearances on various television shows. Despite pursuing diverse interests throughout her career, Presley maintains connections to Hollywood. She is reportedly involved in the development of a cartoon series titled Agent King for Netflix, and is also attached to the fantasy series Almethea, Rise of Wingtar. And that wraps up our journey through the lives of the iconic Dallas cast. What an incredible trip down memory lane, revisiting the characters who brought drama, intrigue, and passion to our screens for over four decades. As we reflect on their then and now moments, we can't help but marvel at the lasting impact of this legendary show. From the scheming J.R. Ewing to the resilient Bobby, the glamorous Sue Ellen to the charming Pam, each character played a vital role in making Dallas a cultural phenomenon, and let's not forget the unforgettable supporting cast who added depth and richness to the storyline. Stay tuned for more Then and Now journeys, and may the legacy of Dallas live on for generations to come.